gentlemen, welcome in, welcome in. We are so excited to have you guys here for episode 99. Episode 99, one away from a hundo, ABB. How's it feeling? Good, 99 problems, but 99 episodes ain't one. That, that's as close as I could get with that reference, I think, today. But that was for Jesse. We were I, on the phone before I this. was, I was ready for, based on the discs that we tried out today, uh, mm-hmm. like if we ended up going with one, of them in particular, I think we could hit them with a 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. Um, mm, mm. See, I like that. Well, that's, and that's close. It's still open. That's, that's still all open. in the notes. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, we're, we're there. Okay. Well, <laughs> Hey, be prepared, everybody. It's episode 99. We're feeling wild. We're going to make some references to um, some, you know, there, there's a lot of things we can do, but um yeah. Before that, just want to thank everybody. It's been really fun doing these lives, Robbie. I know, like, it's just like randomly through like either Wednesday or Thursday in the week, but go, we get live on Instagram, and it's just fun throwing with everybody. It's fun, just like, again, I liked the time just throwing and nothing else, but it's also a lot more fun answering questions and just everybody hanging out. So thank you for all of you who are joining there. If you haven't uh, started following us, please go on Instagram in the bag pod. That's us. You can follow us there. And I try to let everybody give a, give you at least a, somewhat of a heads up that I'm going live. And as we create more content for one another, um, you know, both here and our YouTube channel, that's going to be launching in a few weeks. You know, we're going to just try to give you some more, more clips, more lives, more, um, Q and a opportunities, just a lot more content. So thank you all. And it all starts at, uh, in the bag pod at Instagram. So make sure you follow us there. Yeah. I, I'm just, I, I appreciate it because it's one of those I can jump in and I I'm usually not going to be very active in the chat. I think that I like, I don't want to distract from there. I don't know if that's a bad stance to take, but I, I want you to be able to shine. So like today I talked a little bit because there was a disc that got brought up. One of the guys, Shay in the chat, um, Shay near and dear friend of foundation. Uh, but he mentioned the super puppy, uh, because Brad was trying out some lids and the super puppy is a disc that I, I fell in love with Um, before I had ever discovered overstable putting approach discs, all of my approaches, I threw hammer approaches Mm -hmm. into the green, let them hit flat and slide in and coming from an ultimate background, the super puppy is what I found. And I had a guy, his name was Tom Monroe, PDGA number 33. Uh, And uh, he'll tell you the only reason that he wasn't higher up is because he didn't have the $5 to pay Ed for his membership. Mm-hmm. earlier on um and so by the time he came back a week later he was number 33 but uh tom had a stack of puppies and he literally had to cut me off like a drug deal because i had bought i kept buying them but because of how i was throwing them mm-hmm. i kept hitting the ground so hard that the flight plate in the rim kept separating really so i had a bunch of like just halos basically um but that was, I mean, literally, I, I switched from that to the XT Nova. Like, that was near and so it's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, mm-hmm. Super Puppy's great, but I, Brad, like Brad was throwing some forehands, and I was like, okay, I want to make sure as someone who throws lids on a forehand, this is definitely a disc that you could be like, oh, it's unfo-. like you can't throw it on a forehand; it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? Because if you hit it hard. And we'll talk about that when we get to the the testing the section. But yeah, so I just want to back off and appreciate it. But I enjoyed the lives because then when I see you throwing, there's moments that I get to be like, okay, I'm definitely going to ask him about that during mm-hmm. the uh, experience. Yeah, it's added another element. Again, as we continue to build the show, it just adds like that little extra, just a little element. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. And it, it's fun. So thank you all for supporting that. Um, I think... That all being said, we're ready to bring in our guest, uh, Colin, who is a regular on the live. So I'm excited to get him in the chat and uh, talk to him. So let's bring him in. Welcome into the podcast. Colin, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, doing great. Doing great. How are you guys doing? Couldn't be better if we tried, man. I mean, I, I didn't throw in rain. So bingo card users out there, one down. Didn't yeah. throw in rain rain or wind. Oh, yeah. It was like decent. To, and there was no like crazy sun. People could see the discs. It, I didn't hit the van. So that's good, too. So yeah. all around good day, Colin. So thank you for asking. We're excited to have you on. I know you're someone who will jump in and out of the live. So I love that. I saw you jump in this morning just for a little sneak, little taste, little sneak peek. So uh, excited yeah, about this episode, especially, again, I don't see your bag until after I throw. So now seeing your bag, I get why we were throwing what we were throwing. Pretty excited to talk about it. But 
before that, let's get to know you as a player, and Robbie can walk you through our uh, introductory question. Yeah, so Colin, how long have you been playing disc golf, sir? Uh, just over a year. I, I really started in February of 23. And uh, just started taking off from there. So just crossed my year mark not that long ago. That's awesome. And I've uh, been, been loving it ever since. Uh, we've said it before and I'll say it again. It it just makes my heart so happy that like we are now far enough removed like from the boom of the sport to go, oh yeah, like Colin's a new player. Mm -hmm. But you didn't start playing during COVID. Like you're, right. yeah, like you're not a COVID golfer. Uh, so that's so... We'll call you a posty. That's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna posty. I like it. <laughs> Malone going crazy right yeah. now. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Colin, we put you out in the field, and we're like, all right, we're gonna put a basket X amount of feet away from you, wide open spaces. Um, little shout out to uh, Dixie stop. Chicks. Dixie Chicks. Okay, that was yeah, probably yeah, not. Yeah. I'm gonna get blamed uh, on I'm the Dixie Chicks. It stuff. might be. It might be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is because I was like, it's the landslide gals. Um, okay. All right. Let us know below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, we we said in the intro column before you got in here, the uh, we are feeling squirrely today. Yeah. So uh it's gonna be hey, I'm here for it. Tight um, match it. Yeah, tighten your belts, kids. Yeah. It's gonna be bumpy. <laughs> uh so we put the basket out in the field. How far are you consistently reaching it? Forehand and backhand? Um backhand, I just recently crossed the, the three hundred threshold. Uh, okay. actually right around my, my one year anniversary, so that was pretty cool. And uh, so I'm hitting about 300 to 315, Okay. Uh, d depending on the disc choice, obviously, but around there. Cool. Uh, forehand, I, I just don't have it, man. <laughs> there, there, is, there is no forehand at all. I, I'm maybe getting 150. Um, I if I am able to hit it straight or a, or a straight shot, because I have kind of a, an Anheuser release, um, so if, if I'm able to kind of get one to fight that, I can maybe push like two, two twenty. Okay. That's about it. Okay. I'd call that I, decent. I, if you've got 150 foot forehand, I, I think the words, I don't have a forehand and 150 foot forehand do not connect to one another. Mm -hmm. Uh, tournament I played this past weekend. I played with a guy who at one point I pulled a cyclone out of my bag, which is a old disc mold. Cause I knew that this man used to be on team Discraft, mm -hmm. and he was like, Oh yeah, no, at 99 worlds in the distance comp, I threw a cyclone. Uh, and I was like, Oh, okay. uh, and he's like, yeah, I lost to a DX cheetah, uh, person threw that <laughs> like 584 or something like that. And I was oh like, that gosh. is man. disgusting. But that person, Colin doesn't have a forehand. Uh, like that man walking up, like if it was, Oh, this is so clearly a forehand. He is just finessing like a DX rock over and making it work. So, uh, makes me feel a little better. 150 foot <laughs> forehand, still a great forehand. And mm -hmm. I, it, if you, if you never test it, it, never grows. So we love that. Now let's take you to the putting green, Colin. And we say, okay, going to get 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25 and 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making at each station? I got to tell myself a little bit here. I'm not as good of a putter. I kind of learned the game backwards. So, uh, from 15 feet, um, probably, probably seven. Okay. J just to be safe. I'm going to end up caging at least two just from nerves. Uh, 25, I'm strangely a little more consistent. In. Um, so I I'm probably good for five or six from 25. Okay. And 40 is, you know, hope and a prayer. <laughs> I'd like to say that I could hit one, uh, but you know, it's only if the stars are aligned. So <laughs> I know some guys that tried to hit some 30 footers and it took them nine hours. So, yeah, uh, let's just not even go into that. that was... Warehouse probably still has <laughs> their, uh, their, per, their odor. Uh, yeah, I, I'm literally looking right now at baskets that are full of discs just in the middle in a box of putters, just still here, still here. But Hey, I, just a comment on the 15 to 25 foot thing. And Robbie, you would be the expert at this, but I think it's something about like at 25 foot. I know for me, I feel really good at 20 and then 15. I think I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like I almost choke off my, like the, the actual like follow through and at 20 and 25, I feel like I can do my full like stride and my full follow through. So maybe that's why you feel a little bit comfortable, more comfortable there than 15. Robbie, does that make any sense at all? Yeah, I mean my my two my two theories would be exactly that. At a fifteen footer, 
it's like the pressure is on so much of like, I've got to make this, uh, mm -hmm. like they feel a 15 footer feels so much more like a must make than a 25 footer. And when that pressure coming off, you can hit a little more. So I think, yeah, those two factors, at least I, for me, I can see that. I don't know about you, Colin, if that sounds mm -hmm. like a, the right boat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel, I, cause it feels like it should be a gimme, even if it, even if it is or not. Mm -hmm. And so I just put way too much pressure on myself and I just have to float this in. I, I kind of cornhole it a little too much. That makes yeah. sense. So I don't, I don't let myself hit the chain sometimes. Yeah. I, I played with, uh, Justin, who was one of our guests a couple episodes ago. Um, and he told me, he was like, your short ones look like an entirely different putt. And I was like, yeah, I mean, from 15 and in I'm spin putting, uh, like it's not my normal push putt at all. Like it's coming, it's zipping into the chains because if I try to do my traditional like push putt, I feel like I have to change it because I just, it just zoop, <laughs> climbs and I'm hitting the band every single time. Um, so I feel much more comfortable just flinging it in the basket. Uh, now, what would you say is the biggest strength of your game, Colin? Um, I don't know if I would necessarily call this a strength, but it's, it's probably the best I got is just off the tee. Okay. Um, I worked, I, I decided that if I was going to start really working on my game, um, I was going to start with what I'm the most comfortable with, which is drives. Um, and just driver discs in general mm -hmm. um, and kind of just kind of play to my strengths first. And so I spent probably three or four months straight just practicing distance and practicing off the tee. Um, and most of the time, if I'm taking a, a bogey uh, or worse <laughs> on a hole, it's not because of the tee shot. Mm -hmm. it, it's mostly because of either the, the upshot, which is probably the weakest part of my game, or the or the putting okay so started there and here more lately been trying to, to dial in the, the the putting and the and the upshots mm. i took I, I took to heart uh ravi your uh suggestion from last episode about putting a shovel in yeah. the yard and uh taped up a band on it and just been aiming at that and i could tell a huge difference just in one day so i'm definitely looking forward to trying out that more to try and dial that in but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Off the tee is, is probably whether or not I'm getting the distance I need. That's it's reliable at least. Dude, I cannot agree with you more in my heart, Colin. Uh, I, the tournament I played this weekend, they actually had like four normal baskets kind of out. And then they had this marksman basket just setting off to the side. And everyone was going and putting and warming up on that. Like, the big baskets, the standard baskets. And I was like, mm -hmm. heck no. So I walked over and every round I warmed up on the marksman basket. And it, it was one of my best putting tournaments I've ever had because it was just nice. like, Oh my gosh. Because as soon as I was like consistently making, cause I, I talked about it last week, like I always end on a miss and I literally on my last one, like the first round, I literally intentionally missed because I was just like, I couldn't get off the pole which sounds like so braggy, but then I walked into the round and I was like, I mean, it was insane. It was one of the best putting rounds of my life. And truly that target's so small. You step up to a, you step up to a full size basket when you've been putting at a shovel. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to miss this thing? <laughs> like, yeah. it, it's crazy how much confidence it gives you. Um, well, Colin, let's dive into the bag, man. Uh, we're going to start. We're talking putters uh, for those of you who haven't caught on to that yet um, or if we didn't say it, but we're talking putters. So we're going to start with the drivers and work our way down. Um, you've got three distance drivers in your bag. I guess one of them technically. No, the jet is an 11. Um, so uh, three distance drivers in your bag. Talk us through it. The jet, the Nuke SS and the time lapse. What are they doing for you? For sure. The easiest is the time lapse. It is just uh, my headwind disc. Um, the the rim isn't the most comfortable for me. Hmm. Um, the uh, the uh, lab second one. Um, something about it just I, I only use it in that situation. There's no reason for me to throw it any other time. Hmm. Um, the new SS was a recent addition um, that was 
uh, left abandoned at a local course that didn't have anyone's information on it. And I was trying it out and something about that disc I was just connecting with. Mm. I know in my heart, I have no business throwing a 13 speed, but I was able to hyzer flip it to flat and then turn pretty substantially before it coming back. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's thanks to the, the negative three, three. Um, but it's, the most gorgeous flight I've ever been able to pull off on a disc. Mm. So I have it in my bag still just kind of messing with it. If it's a wide open hole that I don't have to worry too much about left to right movement just to mess with it more. Um, but I, 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 as of right now, I still just love that disc. Um, the jet is kind of my, my go-to like anything over 400. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just, max distance it's flippy but i know i can just yam on it and not worry too much about it, it, it kind of going off the line i want it to be um it flies very similar to my insanity whenever we take a step down um which is my most trusted mold hmm. and so it, it it flies similar to that i just i got that instant trust in it if it's over that 400 I'm going to that and I know I'll be mm -hmm. safe. Okay. Interesting. Flight, uh, flight wise, I guess it, it does turn a little bit yeah. and it, it'll turn a little bit and then it'll have a, not a dumping fade, but just a pretty consistent, you know, finding the, finding its way to the ground. So, um, is that the it, insanity it, or the jet you're speaking about? The, the jet, sorry. Yeah. Um, I find insanities are, at least for me, I don't think insanities are as flippy as intended. Do you feel that way, Robbie? Have you thrown a bunch of those? I, I've thrown, I've thrown a lot of insanities. Uh, the insanity, honestly, that I've thrown the most that I feel like most people end up bagging is funny enough, the most stable run of them that I've seen, which is that eclipse insanity run that has like the skull that looks like its yeah. eyes are like crying or whatever. Um, mm. that's that's the run of insanities that I've thrown the most because I have so many people that are like, Oh yeah, this is the one that I bag. And I feel like they all fly. Yep. Ex yeah. Like they fly. So, so weird. Um, and I actually, when I saw that you had a proton, I asked a friend who has one in his bag, Ryan, I was like, have you thrown a proton? He was like, yeah, that's what I have. And it's, it's a little flippy, but it's not so flippy kind of a deal. Um, that's so fascinating on the nuke SS. Uh, because for some people, yeah, that 13 speed, like the bigger rim actually does feel better in their hand. Like it's like mm -hmm. going to a 12 feels like this weird world of mm -hmm. my hand cannot grab it, but the bigger rim I feel because Brad, aren't you one of those kind of people? Like you like yeah. the bigger rim. I love a bigger rim. I actually threw a nuke SS for a very, very long time because I loved how it felt so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know even Brody, when Brody got into the game, Brody was throwing new XSSs as his primary distance driver. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to say that you're throwing as far as Brody right off the bat, Colin. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, but I still, it's a good path to follow. Good path to follow because then you can kind of progress up the chain. Um, it makes that possible. Sure. Uh, okay. I love it. The jet, not a very popular mold, mm -hmm. but sounds like it's working yeah which is great uh so the i'll tell you the disc that i'm most curious about is the tesla mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does this tesla do for you so initially i had bought it because i had gotten into a bad habit for a while of having an anheuser release mm. and that's what kind of sparked that i'm going to work on my my distance form um cause I was just Anheuser releasing for probably three months straight. And initially I had, I was throwing a dynamic uh, breakout for the longest time in prime plastic. And so not only did it, you know, beat in super fast and become a lot flippier than what I needed at the time. Yeah. Uh, but then I was also Anheuser throwing. So that thing would just turn and burn. Mm -hmm. It was gone. And so I, I bought the Tesla, uh, trying to fix that. And it, it was my go-to for a long time. And then I fixed it and got back to a Heiser release. Mm -hmm. And so now it's a, it's a fairly 
I wouldn't say like super overstable, mm-hmm. but it's if I don't watch how I throw it just with my natural release now, it can get pretty dumpy. I tombstone with it all the time on on wet course days. Um, but it, it is reliable, and I do throw it for like shorter headwind shots or if the wind's not as strong. Um, but it is pretty consistent. Okay. So still a good bit of fade is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So this is, uh, we, one of the questions that we try to ask when people come on the show, for those of you who are listening, uh, is that like, what are areas of your bag that you're not confident in? Because there's sometimes that we look at the bag and we're like, okay, this looks like an area that could use some help. This looks like an area that could use some help. But Mm -hmm. if people just trust the flight numbers that you put in on the, on the like disc RPM, then sometimes that's just not the real story of how that disc actually flies. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we have moments of, if I were to put precious child in there, like if I put all three of my pigs in there, you would think, okay, he is missing a somewhat understable slot, but between my polecat and precious child, I don't need an understable throwing putter Mm -hmm. because those two do it beautifully. So you adjust the numbers. Uh, so the Tesla, it was like, okay, I'm looking and I'm not seeing a ton of like, it doesn't seem like a ton of adjusted flight numbers, Mm -hmm. but the, like the Tesla at that fission plastic, it could be just a really straight, like flyer form that has minimal fade. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to bring the crave into the equation then Mm -hmm. is the crave like one of your go-to throwers actually no um the the crave is uh, more so the the prototype one that's in there is a little bit on the on the chopping block um and i'm i'm hesitating to go there yet because the crave has taught me that i have a bad nose up angle uh Mm -hmm. issue um so I'm, I'm trying to fix that, but I'm not throwing the craves well. And I don't think that's anything about the discs. I think honestly, it's just me <laughs> after working with it. Um, I was surprised. I, I had done a lot of research on the craves before I had got both of those in a, in a dryer Palooza box uh, that my wife got me for our anniversary. And I was surprised at how much fade they had. Mm. They're not dumpy, but it was more than what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, especially the, um, the R2. Um, that's a little bit more to be expected. It has a glow in it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I figured that one probably would be. Um, so it, if I'm not throwing one of the three nine speeds, then I'm throwing the drift. Okay. Okay. So the, the crave has a little too much fade to like, it's, it's enough fade that it's almost like I would rather just throw the Tesla type deal. Um, no. And that's kind of what I struggle with a lot of times in my game, honestly, Mm -hmm. is I don't know when to use the crave or when to use the Tesla because they don't exactly coincide with each other. Okay. Um, I would say the, the crave does fly like a, like just a barely a little bit more stable than my insanity. Mm, okay. So if you took away the speeds and just put them all on one level, yeah, the, the crave kind of slots closer to the insanity than the, than the Tesla. Okay. And so I'm con- on, you know, truth be told on, on myself here, Whenever I could throw the crave, I'm either reaching for the drift to have just a little bit more turn or the insanity that just, it's kind of that the insanity is very, uh, straight, mm. very neutral flying. Uh, and so I'm either, I'm either reaching for the drift or the insanity than the crave. Yeah. That's fascinating. So mm. I, I think my curiosity here and Brad, you can tell me if it's wrong, like, or if you, have a different thought um is 
if if the craves are that much of a question mark, I would pull them out. Uh, because yeah, I will sure. say that amongst the gyro nation, I feel like people are afraid to say something. It, it's hard to say I'm a gyro fan and I dislike the crave. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like you get hunted down for that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if you sign up for gyro nation, you sign up on this watch list and they're all protecting each other and they're all like, I can't confirm <laughs> these things, but I've not been told that it doesn't exist. If you know what I'm saying, wink, yeah. wink, wink, wink. Right, right. Um, so if you're part of this community and you're like, oh yeah, no, I think the craves. Okay. People instantly are like, excuse me, you just talk about our Lord and savior, yeah. the Krave, uh, <laughs> like you're trying to talk trash about the Krave. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like when I put out a video that talked about how great the servo is, I got so nervous throwing the crave in that video. Cause I was like, people are going to come hunt my head that I'm not a crave guy. Uh, so pull the crate if we pull the crave out and if you want to stay in the gyro world something like a volt could work really well um i'm just trying Mm -hmm. to think of something that's in between that insanity and the tesla that actually gives you straight with fade um like consistent Mm -hmm. fade that would be defined um, so the vault comes to mind, but then also I think that you could, if you're like, I know you've talked about, you're not necessarily like married to the gyro. You can mm-hmm. try some other stuff. I think that's where like a stalker comes in really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. river, a river. Yeah. Going to have some fade. I've tried rivers in the past. Have you tried the FD by Dismania? I've not. I've been looking at uh, FDs, FD1s, and Prodigy um, F2s. Yeah, are kind of the things I've had on on my radar for that like one or two stability tick on on disc RPM there. Yeah, I would say C line uh, FD is your yeah. solution. Amongst those, I like the C line FD. Love the it. cheapest option is going to be your Prodigy F twos, um, and the not factory set. Like, I mean, we both know you're talking about. Like, we all know you're talking about the the actual F two mold, um, and it's it's a sleeper disc that a lot of, like. I feel like if a, if a manufacturer or a retailer carries Prodigy, they probably got F twos sitting there, um, and so. Both great options. I do. I agree with Brad in that I like the FD because I think that the FD seasoned enough could become a straight flyer as well to where you could bag a multiple FD setup Mm because you could probably even I Brad, you're way from more familiar. Pause. Try again. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Brad, you are way more familiar with the FD than I am. So what do you think about even like a C line and an S line FD mm-hmm. coming in side by side? Cause that S line FD sounds like it would fly so similar to the insanity right off the bat. Yeah. The S line's going to, it'll have a little stability at the beginning, but it'll beat in pretty quickly and get, just be very straight. Um, and once that season is a little bit, it will eventually get to the point where it does turn a little bit on you. And that's where you just have the C line compliment. Yeah. I, I like the combo plastic combo there. It's a seven speed that I feel like flies as far as a nine speed. Yeah. So nice. definitely some options there. And and once again, we're always a fan here on the show of if, if you're asking questions about a disc column, like I don't really know when to go to this. I don't, rip it out. Uh, yeah, like yeah. just, just pull it out and see, because worst case scenario, right? You're going to, if you pull the craze out of the bag and you played for a month, Maybe there's moments that you step up and you're like, I ah, really wish I had the crave in the bag right now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's just as telling as if you pull them out and you're like, I literally didn't notice a difference in how I score at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you talked about the drift. Walk me through holes where you're like, okay, I'm throwing the insanity here. I'm throwing the drift here. I'm throwing the inertia here because I could see those um, being clouded. Yeah, so the the drift it, it really has to do with distance more than anything. Mm. Um, the drift I'm throwing on holes that are uh, you know two two eighty to three ten. Okay. Um, the insanity I'm throwing from three ten to four hundred. 
uh, not, not my distance, the, <laughs> the, the, the pen distance and, uh, the drift also, I can get to turn more if I release it flat. Mm -hmm. The drift is more of a dependable, uh, hyzer flip disc for right. me. Um, but if I release it flat, I get more of uh, almost like a, almost like a little flex shot. Okay. As, as flight type of shot with it, um, which the drift is, is really a lot of times for, for wooded golf, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times. Um, cause it's, e it just cause it's easier for me to shape Yeah. with it. The inertia, this thing, it, it kind of took me by surprise. So it is, uh, from the, the starter set and I was expecting something that would be more straight than the insanity, just based off of the flight numbers. Yeah. But we know that they're lies. And when I threw it, I released it flat, and it, if I get it up to speed, it honestly almost, it almost turns and burns. It, it's, it's a lot more, that's why my, my note in there says deceptively flippy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I have to put a baby hyzer on it even to get just a more, uh, slow turn. That's kind of my natural release. So that's somewhat easy for me to do, but, uh, tunnel shots, uh, that kind of end right, or just a, you know, right ending, uh, hole, um, without like a, you know, a sharp turn. Uh, that's, that's when the inertia is coming out for, on like a driver distance for that. Okay. Okay. I, I think that part of the bag sounds like yeah. that side, you've got it all figured out. Have you thrown the drift compared to the rhythm? I've not thrown a rhythm. Okay. I, I, I saw that they curious. were recently restocked everywhere and I, I was kind of curious about it too, but yeah, I've yeah. never seen, I've never gotten to, to try it. The rhythm's one of those that I feel like the gyro nation, when it came out, everyone was like, oh, we've been looking for this disc. Like we've really wanted this disc. And so a lot of people went to the rhythm. I mean, from arms all the way of like an am arm up to top, top pros like are throwing the rhythm and extreme they're throwing it extremely well. Uh, so I'd just be curious how the drift flies in comparison to them, because obviously the drift has been around longer than the rhythm. So mm -hmm. I'd be curious on that side of things. Let's talk mid ranges. Unless you got any questions on fairways, Brad? No, I think uh, rhythm for me. Rhythm has always been like a like that nice little straight to a little bit of stability, the, even based on the right of the flight number. So that might be a good replacement for your craves too, if you're interested in that. I think it'll be without having to season something in. It might be there where you want it already. Um, mm. So just food for thought on that. No, I think for sure. Uh, I'm excited to hear about your mid ranges too because you have one of a disc that's near and dear to my heart with the uplink. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the one that I, I bag, um, is also from that starter set. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's, it's a roller. Mm -hmm. Um, even I have, uh, it, this, this will be a little bit more telling for when we get down to putters, but, uh, I have a struggle with, uh, controlling my power. Mm -hmm. anything below like 75%. Um, and so I use that in relation to the detour of if I know I need a roller or I know I need to get right, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I'm just yamming on that uplink and turning that thing over. Um, and kind of bringing that roller into play. The detour is more shapeable for me. Yeah. Cause it can handle the torque. I can hyzer flip. I can do a, a slow panning anhyzer. Um, I can kind of do anything <laughs> with that detour and it actually pushed my original uplink out. Mm -hmm. It was a standard neutron and it was kind of a little bit more, a little bit more stable than what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So once I tried out the, the detour and tried out the uplink, I got them at the same time. Uh, the, the one that I back now, I said, cool. I have a world where I can use both of these in conjunction. Cause I love both the molds. 
Yeah. So kind of get to use both. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very good, it, and it's, it's cool for me, somewhat new having that, being able to say that I have that roller option. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And a couple of times I've brought it into play at a local course and, you know, almost parked a dog leg right 290 foot hole. And mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, it, it's a really neat shot for me to be able to call on. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. I think that's the reason, like, I like the idea of the detour personally, but it just was too close to my like max weight uplink, neutron uplink, and I just wasn't willing to bail on my uplink. So I think that's why I didn't didn't love the detour. It was good a good disc, but I just didn't have a use for it in my bag. And you were telling us a story off air that you had kind of a special connection with uplink anyway, which I thought was very cool. That if you would like to share that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I had started uh, disc golf really in February of last year, like I said. And then in July, um, I had found you guys just searching disc golf on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys were one of the first options that came up and I was wanting something that talked more about, you know, discs and plastic. And so I, I started, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big, uh, podcast binger. Yeah. If I come across one that, you know, I, I believe at the time you guys were around like 75, uh, or 56, you know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, so I, I always start at, at one and I work my way up until I'm caught up. I love uh, it. so love it during, during work from July to October, mm-hmm. I pretty much did nothing but just listen to you guys. So episode two, uh, talking about the uplink, I was looking for a mid at that time. I had no mids, no workable mids. Mm-hmm. I had no idea how to even get started. Uh, so after I listened to it, I bought an uplink. Nice. I had a nomad already and, uh, kind of just decided to, to start working with MVP, uh, for myself. I'm not any inspi- uh, aspiring, uh, pro or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I, I know that's just not for me. <laughs> and, uh, but, I wanted something to where I was, I wouldn't feel overwhelmed. Mm. I threw dynamic initially getting into it. There is a small, uh, section of a hardware store mm-hmm. that carried four brands dynamic won't be in one of them. And when, you know, the world was kind of that small, it was easy to go. Oh, I like this dynamic. I like this in a, uh, but then as I kind of started learning more, Oh, there's different plastics. Oh, there's different runs that can affect how the disc flies. Flight numbers aren't real. Uh, as I go through and start learning these, I was kind of getting a little overwhelmed, but I love the sport. I wanted to stick with it. I wanted to get decent. Mm-hmm. And so that was around the same time that, you know, I listened to the uplink episode. I listened to, uh, the episodes when Hunter went, uh, full MVP, uh, mm-hmm. and kind of just in the space doing research. I thought, well, it limits me to three brands, you know, a few dozen molds, uh, you know, and, and just a handful of plastics and use that to learn the game. Mm. I and I that. think even you guys had mentioned that to an extent to a few episodes, you know, somewhere down the line. And that was just what I needed at the moment to be able to get into it and feel like I knew what I was doing. Right. And being able to separate, looking at the plastics, learning that, and then learning how to actually throw them. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great a great approach. Yeah, I think that's maybe even for me, even though I started like just one manufacturer bag, it did help me kind of learn maybe a little quicker and then also be open to more stuff, which sounds counterintuitive, but I can appreciate that. But I think it's really cool just seeing some person, I will call you a person in the wild, if you will, just kind of finding us. <laughs> you know, finding the uplink episode and the rest is history. So I think that's really cool. And just, I just appreciate that. And thank you for being a fan and following us along. And Hey, look, 99 episode 99, you're here. Uh, and we're happy. And Hey, you better be careful about the flight number co- uh, comments. A big flight number is going to come <laughs> after you and you're just going to disappear off the place, the face of the planet. So let's yeah. just, let's it's keep true. it. Let's it's be got careful. two, di- two different <laughs> big name, unnamed organizations coming after him right now yeah. uh it's, it's becoming a dangerous episode for Colin. yeah uh, right so I, let, I worry before it gets too dangerous let's get into the meat of the episode which is 
uh, the putters, <laughs> what we actually threw for the day. Um, we'll talk a little about, about flight numbers, which some of them are going to agree on. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll turn this episode around. I love it. I love it. So uh, you've got on the stable side, you got two envies. Can't can't have you on with ABB in the room and not talk about the envies. Uh, mm-hmm. So right. uh, you've got your rebirth and a Eclipse R two. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what's the what's the difference between those two? The uh, rebirth envy uh, I think is pretty well established at this point. It's a lot glidier mm-hmm. uh, and a lot straighter. Um, I really almost use that rebirth envy as a mid range. Um, which throws my echo and reactor situation into that much more confusion. Mm-hmm. And um, the R2 Cray, or sorry, R2 Envy uh, flies like I would expect an Envy to. Okay. Um, these are both uh, the first two I've, I've ever had mm-hmm. of them. And the R2 has that consistent fade it's not mm-hmm. strong but it's there mm-hmm. um that i can trust i will try to forehand the r2 envy sometimes on a chip up uh, upshot yeah um the the rebirth i i really just use as like a off the tee or you know 200 plus upshot mm-hmm. and i like that you have a blue one with a blue rim I think it's great. I love, oh, it's I love, a it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you also bag another mold I've actually never even heard of until right now. Uh, I'm gonna say the Fu Song is what I'm gonna mm-hmm. call it. Let's go, Brad. What? <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. My Mandarin the is, is coming up. Uh... Yeah, no. Fu Song. <laughs> Fu Song. Um, so tell us about that. What? It, why? Why? That's what I'm so, asking. So uh, I, uh, it's kind of a uh, li- little bit about me outside of disc golf is uh, I studied uh, Mandarin for uh, seven years. Okay. Wow. Well, wait, and... pause, pause. Don't go any farther. Did I say it correctly? Yes. Yes, you did. Heck yeah. Okay. Continue. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, so I, and then I, a lot of my free time, uh, I, I love studying, uh, Chinese and Japanese history, um, culture, things like that. And so, uh, I was introduced to Equin through, uh, my cousin that actually got me started into disc golf. Mm-hmm. He had just bought a twin swords, mm-hmm. uh, whenever we went out and I love that disc and I'm like, Hey, there's a disc golf company that's you know, nothing but Chinese history and, mm-hmm. you know, lore and culture. And so, uh, the bad thing is no physical retailers, uh, almost just period sell them, let alone near me mm-hmm. <laughs> and, in Ohio up here. So Shout I, uh, yeah, um, Dayton area. <laughs> nice. Okay. So my, my wife bought that for me and I tried it as my putting putter for a while. I tried to change up my putting putter and it was good. It's not nearly as overstable as the flight numbers suggest not mm-hmm. to make that situation even worse, mm-hmm. but it, it really should be like a, like a two, three, zero, one. Okay. Almost instead. So, mm-hmm. but I, I use it as a thrower. It's a great, it's a great disc. Um, I'm curious to see how the glaze plastic is kind of, a little bit more slippery than I would like for a putter. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a decent thrower. So I'm curious to see how that'll change as the, the weather warms up, see if it feels any different and uh, see if, you know, it still has a, still has a place in the bag. I hope so. I love the disc. I hate taking it out of my bag, but we'll just have to see. Can you, can you say the manufacturer's name for me again? Equin. Equin. Okay. See, I'm going to be educated now. That's, <laughs> I love that. Uh, Robbie and I also appreciate particularly Japanese culture for me, but um, yep. based on you know our, our sleeves here that we have, uh, are yep. working on currently. So um, that's cool. Well, thank you for that. That's very cool. Um, and then <laughs> we just have our Nomad, which I'm guessing is just your like straight throwing putter, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. It is, it is a frozen rope. 
Um, it is the, uh, in my bag currently, it's what's been in there the longest. Okay. Um, it was my putting putter for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of wanted to change, not for any particular reason, but just to, just because. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and messing around with it, I used it as a, started using it as a warm up when I was practicing my, my distance. And I realized, Hey, I'm throwing this thing on a 250 foot frozen rope. Mm -hmm. Uh, why am I just putting with this? And, uh, so that, that was how that changed out of that. And that disc, I I played around at a local course that I shot my best round on. And I used that on all, almost all of the shorter holes and parked it almost every single time. That disc is just, Sure. That that is my precious child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Well, okay. that makes I would say that makes my. Let, can I ask one question before we dive into yours? Uh, dive into the throws, Brad, mm-hmm. because I think this could actually inform even more so what we're looking for. Okay, how does the Nomad handle Anheuser? If I if I throw it right, it'll hold it. Okay. okay. Great, great question. Great question. Okay. So if you don't throw it right, does it fade out or does it burn over? If I throw two nose up, which I think is my issue, I'm still kind of in the middle of working that out. Mm-hmm. Um, if I don't throw it right, it will, um, yeah, it'll fight out. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Perfect. That's, that Great is, that is exactly what we needed to know. So Brad, we had you throw some of the most controversial, uh, not the the controversial is, uh, controversial makes it sound bad. Mm -hmm. The most polarizing slot in disc golf, I would say. Yeah. The lid, the lid slot. Um, so Robbie actually requested that I throw the rattler and the spore. If, if we had them, um, definitely had the spore, but did not have the rattler, but, I did borrow said Rattler, and I on the live they informed me that I say Rattler weird, and I'm sorry for that. Um, <laughs> that's that's at like Southern Ohio. I'm I'm from near Athens, Colin. So okay. So um so the uh, and I I'm gonna lean into it. The Rattler and the Sport. So I did throw them. I won't be giving out the Rattler, but I did want to throw it as a baseline since Robert mm-hmm. recommended it. Um, did throw the Spore today. I grabbed the um, pitch as well which is interesting. And I also threw the glitch because it's the only lid I've thrown that I actually throw often because I literally keep it in my truck. Um, like, uh, my family went out with some, uh, friends for dinner on Monday night and we were talking at the back of my truck and me and my boys were throwing it in the part in empty parking lot. So like, you never know when you're going to have the glitch out throwing it. So I thought it'd be a good like reference point for these other discs. So I kind of could compare them against each other. Yeah. And we said off air, one of the reasons that I didn't put the glitch in the mix is because looking at the, the setup here, Mm -hmm. if you have that much gyro in the bag, I was like, there's no way this man has not thrown a glitch before. Mm -hmm. And if it hasn't made his bag, there's gotta be a reason that it hasn't made his bag. So, but I, that's not to say like, oh man, I don't like it being in the mix because I agree with Brad, like as a baseline of this is my best performing lid. Mm-hmm. How do these others compare? Because his best, per- you do, his best performing lid, you don't have a glitch in your bag, right, Brad? No, I do not. Yeah, yep. But so, I throw it often, which is funny. Just I don't use it on the course. Yeah. Um. So hand feel these vastly different. Yes. Um. So glitch is just a glitch. It's a it's a plate. That's what it feels like. Um. And that's my only issue with lids. I just they don't feel great in my hand. Um, I think I'd probably even bag the glitch, honestly, if it felt better in my hand. I don't mind it if I'm like tossing with my friends or like my, my family or whatever. Um, doesn't bother me because I'm just like goofing around just playing and having a good time. And so it feels okay. Um, pitch feels, a. I mean, there's no bead, so I typically don't like a bead of any kind. So I guess in that way it feels, but it still feels kind of the same as the glitch. It just feels like a, a plate, a lid, if you will. Um, spore i like the hand feel of the spore better but it is so gummy i just don't i don't love a disc that is that gummy personally 
Um, we'll get to the flight later, though. It does have a bead. This bead does not bother me. Um, but we'll get to the flight later. Uh, and my thoughts on the spore. Uh, Rattler, garbage. <laughs> um, complete waste of time. Uh, no, it it's fine. I think for uh, like ultimate folks, probably feels really good. It does feel. Yeah. I mean, it's very ultimate. It's a you left your ultimate out in the sun and it was wet and it shrunk. Like that's what happened with the Rattler. Um, for a disc golf like grip, it just there's nothing that feels worse on my hands now. For in Robbie's case, if I'm overhanding and like sliding this guy up to the basket, great time. That feels like a great time. Yeah, but that's not what I'm here trying to recommend. So. <laughs> I'll talk about the Rattler, but um, hot garbage. Yeah, I mean, and also you got to understand, you're talking to a guy that throws a pole cap. I took a jar of peanut True. butter and I took the lid off of it and put mm. it in my bag. So and it was fine. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I and I love it. Uh, and I've so, seen you throw it. So there, hey, yeah. there's no hate to Rattler people out there, rat lights, if you will. Um, there's no hate for you. I just, for me, no, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I never forget when Trevor was like, oh, you bagged the pole cat ironically. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it was before cre the first ever creators cup. And I was like, just wait, Trevor, like mm -hmm. just play around with me, watch me throw it. And you'll be like, oh, mm -hmm. maybe I should put one of those in my bag. And yeah. sure enough, he came up to me on like hole 14 or 15. and was like, okay, I was wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, so, uh, Okay, so you got those um, hand feel. I completely agree on the gumminess of the spore. Uh, Colin, have you held a spore? Because they they're kind of like the hot stuff right now. I have not. Okay, I, I have I have been wanting to try one though. Yeah, the so the I did cloudstone the, plastic. Way talk better. about that difference. Way better. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely stiffer. It's more like neutron. Like so, it's basically like a glitch, L like that feel. Way okay. better. Way better. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And they call the, the, the flat run or like the stock run. There we go. They call it Neo. Yeah. Not Neo. Brad. Have you ever felt Neo that feels like that? Cause you well, felt a lot of Neo plastic. I have a lot of Neo plastic. I have a Neo origin that I throw. It does not feel anything like Neo. Yeah. It's this like is they, they Neo left Neo soft. in the sun. Yeah. Like Neo, Neo gummy, Neo soft. Uh, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's a wild experience, but I will say, that as much as like it is a shocking feeling, mm -hmm. I have met several folks who actually adore that plastic because <laughs> it serves it serves a, a purpose that I think we'll get to here when you throw them. So, Brad, mm -hmm. you go to throw these discs out in the field. Yes. Let's talk full power rips. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. um, well, he yeah. laughs. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> "Yeah, um, you're not you're not throwing any of these boys above like sixty percent power. You're just you can't. This rattler, I can I could barely sneeze on it without it rolling over. So um, again, to be fair, this is Isaac. He let me borrow one because we didn't have any in the warehouse. He actually throws one, and uh, it's very beat in. So to be fair, it's beat a beat in rattler, but." Um, yeah, it was super flippy. I mean, you could lay into the spore and the glitch a little bit more than the pitch. Um, they could handle that torque resistance a little bit on backhand. Um, pitch could too. You just had to be careful, like not to give it any extra ante or anything like that. Cause the, the pitch and the glitch did fly very similar until you would give them like, a, like if you gave the pitch a little reason to turn, it would turn. Um, but mm. if you try to throw them like a little baby hyzer, or something like that. They threw, they threw, flew pretty much the same. But anytime I like come over a little too much or whatever, the pitch would take that Anheuser. It's a very like, um, not to jump ahead, Robbie, but the pitch was really cool because it was a very like, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to call it an intuitive thrower. So it's like kind of whatever input you gave it, it kind of wanted to keep. Um, mm. Now it wouldn't fade hard or anything like that because it's just not, doesn't have a lot of fade. Um, but even like a little hyzer or flat, it would go pretty straight. And I think the Eclipse plastic helps it have like that tick of stability. If you put it, if they put it out in neutron or when they put it out in neutron, I should probably should say, um, it will probably be a little bit more understable than this run. Um, but yeah, I think the input you gave it was kind of the output you're going to give. And if you gave it a little reason to turn, it would definitely turn without a whole lot of effort, but it wouldn't burn over on you, which is what I like. Uh, the Rattler would burn. 
Um, even on forehand, which I threw them on forehand poorly uh, a lot, but I did throw them on some forehands. But with the, with the right touch, you can get a really nice forehand, especially if you release on hyzer on the pit from the pitch glitch and spore uh rattler was a little like kind of hopeless for me today um but yeah you had to be they're all finesse discs and i think that's probably some of the point here too especially i love what you said earlier about you struggling with powering down um these discs will teach you that very quickly um i know with just speaking from personal experience with the glitch like i love throwing it on forehand like if i'm just playing around like in the yard or whatever um, I love throwing a little snappy for, uh, forehand with it. It teaches you, yeah, like I'm not using my full body. I'm not putting a lot of heat into it, but I'm giving that nice little finesse flick uh, and it will turn a little bit and fade a little bit, which is very cool. So yeah, power is not going to be the name of the game for any of these discs, but they'll all take some. So it's not like you have to baby them, but it will definitely teach you a little finesse. Um, Teach a lot about nose angle too, Robbie. That's something I know that I didn't even know when on the live was it's really going to like, you can really play, start to play with nose angle a lot. So if you want like a really soft approach, you can like put them nose up and they'll give you a nice soft approach and soft landing. So that's kind of a fun part of it too. Mm. Yeah. I like the more you described, even when you said, well, when we asked what uh, strength of the game off the tee and you were like, approaches are my weakness. Mm-hmm. This is this is a disc that really I think can shine in that realm. Mm-hmm. So uh, thinking to one of your favorite features when you're recommending a disc, multi shot option. Mm-hmm. Uh, which of these discs really shined the most in that multi shine option for multi shot option for you? Um, I really think I really think the pitch, and I almost said the glitch, but the reason I say the pitch is nothing to do with you throwing them the glitch before but more to like i'm looking at your flight chart here and like the the gap that you have i think the pitch is going to favor more the understable side versus like the neutral to slightly stable side Mm -hmm. um i think with the the pitch listen let me back up look i really like the spore i just can't get over the hand feel and if they were coming out in like this um like this lux vapor or whatever the cloudstone is something like that um if they if those were readily available i it might have a different story because i think you could probably beat one of these in to be mm-hmm. beautiful um but just off the shelf and just the hand feel just not a super big fan the pitch however i think you're going to be able to start working with some like finesse like turnover like floaty turnover shots i think you can work on some like nose up finesse like straight approach shots i really think that this it can start teaching you to have like switch from an anheuser forehand to a like a small hyzer release like a baby hyzer forehand mm-hmm. to give a little mm-hmm. flick up shot with them i think it'll handle that for you and here's the thing if it's if it's burning over on you you're doing it wrong so then it's going to be like a nice teaching aid i think for those type of like that 150 foot in like soft approach and i think this disc will give you multiple of those abilities personally so I, I think I think pitch Robbie is where I'm going. Okay, Colin, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, that sounds great to me. I uh, obviously being in that space, I've I've heard a lot about the the pitch, mm-hmm. and uh, was always kind of curious how it compared to the glitch anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely sounds like it would be more uh, teachable than what the than what the glitch proved to be for me for whatever reason yeah so and i think i don't think and just to be clear i don't think there's like a ton of difference between the two if i'm not mm-hmm. counting like the bead right um all i did notice was like when i gave it a reason to like turn it would do that easier than a glitch would now a glitch still does a glitch will still turn so don't hear me not saying that but i just feel like and i feel like the pitch when it beats in is going to be beautiful um so but i think it'll teach you a lot so I, i'm just i'm curious to hear your feedback that will be one we will have to have you back on and talk about it especially with you um do you still have the glitch or do you trade it in no i still have them I, yeah. it'd be cool to have you throw them together and see the difference i think that yeah. would be a good experiment too because to me i think where it it sounds like it's going to shine is exactly the question that we thankfully asked before diving in about the nomad is like if you try to throw the nomad on anheuser and you don't throw it well Mm -hmm. it's going to fight out or it's going to do something like that. And the glitch 
it feels like honestly can f- be the exact same thing of like you think because it's so lightweight that you're just going to be able to just pop it up and let it turn. Mm-hmm. But if you don't send it, it fights out even yep. at a lightweight mm-hmm. type world. And so something that can hone in on that understable and also that you can't yam on mm-hmm. could be just huge. And you talk about like not feeling confident on the putting green, not feeling like having a disc like this in the bag that you can throw that sort of like nose up, like floaty approach with. It's dangerous how many times you can be a hundred feet short of the basket and just boop, mm-hmm. send it in, like throw it in from a hundred feet and still like throw that shot without worrying that you're going to leave yourself a 45 foot comeback that you would if you tried to throw mm-hmm. your, uh, your envy on that same shot kind of a deal. So never been in that curious. situation before. <laughs> yeah. 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 So like, I mean, telling you it's, it is a, that like flick of the wrist, throw it nose up, up shot. This is the perfect type of disc to learn for that. And I would tell anyone who has distance issues, this is a really cool shot to add to your bag, a cool slot to add to your bag mm-hmm. because if you're playing 350 foot holes on a regular basis and you only throw 300 feet comfortably, you're going to be 50 feet short so many times. And that's just get, that just gets so boring over and over again, just lobbing these like putts up there and being like, well, this isn't really going to go in. This wouldn't really, mm-hmm. but what if you had the opportunity to like actually give it a chance and throw something at it mm-hmm. could be huge. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, so we'll get this out in the mail to you. Um, excited to hear your feedback. And again, thanks for being on for episode 99, 99. of all things, which is crazy. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this is this has been quite the treat. Yeah, man. I well, love it. We appreciate it. We'll see you soon. 99 hey. problems, but a lit ain't one. Hey, here we go. Here we go. I said 99 mm-hmm. problems, but a lit ain't one. I said 99. Yeah, we are super, super stoked. Uh, episode 99 complete. Brad, we have a, uh, before we dive into, obviously, with Sue in the Warehouse, uh, Next week, mm-hmm. we are planning to, um, we want to ask a couple questions in the comments, but next week, uh, we are going to do episode 99 and a half because I will be in, uh, Nashville with Brody. Uh, and so it feels like a risky world to try to do some big live show that we've never done before. Correct when I'm not in my normal setup and have access to multiple screens. Uh, mm-hmm. And if last year was any indication, we're going to end up with some technical difficulties yep. anyways, if That's we true. tried to film with me in Nashville. So uh, what we want to do is in the comments, if you have thrown the rhythm and the drift and you're a gyro guy, really want to know uh, if you plan on hunting down Colin for uh, his statements about flight numbers and the crave, let us know that way we can send our protection program out to uh, yeah. keep him, you know, uh, foundation witness protection. <laughs> exactly. Program. Uh, foundation care actually now includes that as well. Yeah. Witness, uh, yeah. So. so, uh, but want to know that. And then the other thing is that we thought about this as like, uh, an alternate option for episodes when we have a situation like next week where I can't make it. Um, and so doing a little Q and a type deal. So, Questions for Brad. Brad's going to do a little Q&A. So we'll probably end up throwing something on my Instagram, the in the bag Instagram to like get questions for Brad. Mm -hmm. Uh, But would love for you uh, questions that you have for Brad, uh, whether they're foundation related, life related, bag related, whatever they may be. um, Send those out because he's going to do a QA and a next week. comments is comments and a like a poll on instagram so those, those are probably the best ways to get mm-hmm. questions brad yeah i think yeah leave them here leave them on uh and then robbie and i will put post them on our personal instagrams as well so we'll try to get gather enough um you know i don't know what format's going to be I, I would love to do a live q a whether it be on the podcast network or whatever we're going to figure out this logistics this week but um we'll just we'll answer all those questions even if we do a recorded show just like a, a q a question that way we'll do that so um, any and all questions, it can be, yeah, personal, it can be disc golf related and the bag related foundation related, Robbie related that I can answer for Robbie, I guess. It's true. Um, it's true. Yeah. You can just any, make it up. Even if, uh, even if it, it's not actually true, if it's family friendly, it's appropriate. So bring it up, bring it on is all I got to say. I'll answer whatever. 
Um, so yeah, we appreciate that. And we'll, we'll run that next week. So leave the comments below. And then week after that, we're going to try to, uh, here's, here's the, the calling, the casting shout out. Um, so that's going to end up being the last week of April, uh, that we shoot this. So if you are a guest that's listening and you've been on in the bank and you've never come back for a recap, get ready because that means that basically we're going to have you come back anyone that wants to, and we're just going to, we're just going to buckle up and go, uh, mm-hmm. and hear how the discs fly for you and do a little catch up. So mm-hmm. should be, should be a good time. Uh, and I, I have no idea how that episode is going to go, Brad. I think it is going to be a hilarious logistical nightmare, but oh. it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I'm sitting here staring at these uh, baskets full of putters from the, the torture that the guys uh, submitted themselves to the other night. I'm like, do we do some sort of like, since we're doing this live, do I like, do we do something? Do we do a challenge? Do we do some challenges? You guys let us know. Yeah. I'm game for something real. I, here's, I'll tell you this. I'm not doing 2,000 made putts. No I'll way. say that. I will say no that. Way. I may not even do 1,000. I may not even do 500. I but, do appreciate. I got defended in the, the comments of one because someone asked like, oh, how long do you think it would, like, do you think Robbie could beat Hunter's time? Because Hunter did in like three hours and 26 minutes or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I honestly, I don't know. Because I don't, I don't practice a lot of 30 foot putts. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing is like, that's, that's a weird little distance for me. Uh, but also I don't have access. I, maybe I do. I probably do. I'd be curious how many putters Hunter was using mm. to balance the scales. Cause Brody took a long time as well, but Brody literally had like 30 putters. Uh, and that's right, all yeah. he was using. So, yeah. Um, I'm staring at a solid, like 200 right now. Yeah. That's insane. That's insane. Uh, but you know, some of those putters were good and if they're good, we put them in the bag other good discs come at foundationdiscs.com brad horrific transition but we got there what's new in the warehouse i'm gonna ignore that but um you tried and that's what matters here hey we got Uh, it we got around um yeah so new in the warehouse uh you kind of alluded to it earlier but foundation care now here in april is on every order just included um what that means let's say you buy a pitch and you're like man I really want to love this. I threw it a couple times. It's in good shape. I didn't go scrape it on concrete on purpose for fun. No. Um, I threw it. Didn't really love it. You can. Uh, there's a form on our website. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's a um, uh, that'll get you in contact with us. It just says, "Hey, you know, this just didn't work out for me. What we'll do? We'll go ahead and send you um, a refund for that. Once we get your disc, you'll return the disc to us. Once we get it, you'll we'll get a uh, gift card for that value. You can swap it out for another disc. So." It's a nice risk-free way to try um, a new disc. So yeah, again, maybe you've never thrown a lid before. Now's a great time to check because, hey, we have foundation care and maybe you love it and that's great. You keep it in the bag. If not, um, you can reach back out to us and we'll get you out something else that suits you a little bit better. So um, just something we want to add. We've done a lot of research, a lot of testing. It just seems like a great thing to just include in our uh, offerings. And great thing is if you shop with us in person, we could even offer it in person as long as we create you a customer profile. So very excited about that. Um, let's see. We have the P3X from Discmania releasing. This is Wednesday when we're filming. It releases today. So there show, still should be some of those. Nicholas Entela, um, DD1, which have the big old cat with the cowboy hat on, which is hilarious, and I love it. Uh, those release. Uh, we have some Discraft restock going up. We have um, Nocturnal. Is it Nocturnal? Yeah. Nocturnal Jackalopes up, which are very cool. Um, some of our trilogy uh, restock, we have some diamonds, some pure, some like very like classic, um, good, like beginner to intermediate sort of things um, there as well. We still have some Discraft Tour series that's going up. You know, we have been moving through a lot of those and uploading stuff up behind it. Um, I believe we'll have the um, Radiant, which is the Glow, Supras, um, Eras, and... There's one other mold that I'm forgetting, but there'll be three different molds that we have the Radiant Plastic in, which is very cool. Um, so those will be coming up. Um, a little slower week in the warehouse this week, just because we have our grand reopening for our new storefront on Lynchburg on Friday. Um, we're releasing a bunch of custom foundation stuff for that. I mean, we have tons of custom stamp discs. Um, 
exclusive uh, Brixton card for the first hundred people that come here commemorating our old store, which is so sick. Robbie, I did grab you one, so you'll be getting one. Um, and then we have a bunch of new foundation merch releasing as well. New hats, new shirts, new windbreakers. Um, those are all going to be in store. What's cool is like our new store, we're going to focus a lot more on custom stuff. So we're going to be te- like kind of, I guess, um, focus grouping uh, some new designs and new things before we put them out um, to mm. everybody. So it's a very cool thing that's happening in the store. So a lot of energy focus there. And then MCO next week, for those of you who are going to MCO, Robbie's going to be there. Hunter's going to be there. Brody and Jason are all going to be there. So make sure you all uh, find them. There'll be some custom Robbie C stuff. Wink, wink, yeah. wizards, wink, wink that are going to uh, the custom blend for Robbie down there, um, which are going to be great. Brody's going to have a uh, small run of discs that we did with him, all white with a blacked out Dark Horse logo on the top. So mm. very sick. Uh, he'll be doing uh, some signing down there. We'll have some Bogey Bro stuff as well. Tons of stuff happening both here on um, yeah, on the online store, in person, and vending. So wherever you are, find us. Make sure you come say hi. We appreciate all of you. While you're saying hi, make sure you pick up something. It's going to be good. We know it's going to go in your bag. And we'll see you all next week for episode 99, part, part two. We'll call it part D. 99, part, 99 part, uh, I don't know. We should have asked uh, Colin what two is in Mandarin. Uh, yeah. Oh, I wish I knew that. I feel like I should know that. But What is it? Yeah. Yequin? Yequin? Yeah. Yequin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yikun. now when someone says Yikun, I'll be like, you yeah. fool. You fool. Uh, you fool. You. All right. We'll see you guys see next you. week. Bye-bye.